Don't we feel the rain in here? desolation of the wicked when he cometh. Yes. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot up from being taken. Yeah. How many of you appreciate your foot that God gave you? Yeah. I thank God for you and just greetings to all the saints of the Most High God in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Words cannot express how grateful we are to God for his anointed leader, the late Mother M. L. Tate. We don't want you to forget Mother Tate. Mother Tate brought the shield, right? That's right. And she's going to see us through. We are thankful to God for allowing us to conduct this 75th annual Sunday Bible School Convention yeah. of the former East Coast Diocese, convening August the 3rd through the 5th, 2018. I, I'm skipping, I'm not reading the whole right. message. We are living in a time of dramatics and Ominous change. Yes. We are at this very moment of history. The planet is in grave crisis. We are reached. We have reached the day which the prophet had in mind when he wrote, "Woe unto them that call." You know, you got people get those things all mixed up. That's right. But they are, you got evil and you have good. Right. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Now you get this book of evil and you get home and get all of the mistakes that we made. <laughs> And I promise you, you will enjoy it. 
May God bless you. Keep smiling. Keep smiling. Amen. God loves to see us smile. God doesn't want us going out with a long face. I'm serious. If your money running low, smile anyway. We love you, and I shall knock it off the floor and put you in the hand of a special man. Sister Sister, let go of the soap and get the cup. It's she real. Let's give her a hand. That's all. Let's hold on to God's unchanging hand. Don't look back. Keep going. God bless you and thank you. Come on and put your hands together. We thank God for such an anointed leader. You can do a little bit better than that. It's not often that we have the bishop in our presence. It's not often that we're able to hear her speak to us words of wisdom. This is a privilege in 2018 to hear the voice of our bishop. To God be the glory. And while you're applauding, keep applauding for our youth once again. They're coming forth. The youth choir to give us another selection. Following that, we will have our introduction of speaker. Coming from presiding elder Johnny Hampton Gilliam. Put your hands together, the service will flow in that order. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. How many of you know that you will win? You will win, and this will be led by Sister Orion. Your home. Oh, yes. Yeah. The enemy came up against your children. 
Bishop Fletcher, Bishop Mims, uh, Bishop Jameson, and General Elder, High State Bishop Mims, and all you guys' people, amen. I'm here to give the introduction uh, for Elder Philip. Elder Philip and I go way, way, way back. Uh, I can't say about Elder Philip. He doesn't look like what he's been through. I can also say that. Uh, Elder Philip dare to soar. I don't say that lightly because I was there when he preached his first trial sermon. I was there when he would walk with his little briefcase at the time. Him and his friend Dara Ellis. Now, and you remember, Pl I mean Florence? Yes. So I, I I introduce the man that you might not know that this man dared to soar. Yes. I, I'm reminded that General Elder Philip was one that didn't mind going in the community. Remember, he was a young man, and the community wasn't all that friendly. But he would go up in there with the, well, some of y'all call it dope hole. And him and Daryl, they would go and they would evangelize. And they would dare to soar and speak God's word to whoever would listen. Sometimes when they saw him coming, especially Philip, they go this way and Philip still going. He's trying to catch up with them. So, you see, this is his passion. This is what he's always done. This is a man who loves revivals, doing revivals. He have a heart for souls. It didn't just start just a couple years ago, but I'm reminded it was under the elder Harrison that it all began. See, I, I got a witness over there, you know, and, and, and I'm reminded that with General Elder Philip, I would always see Missionary Beck, but she would sit there and she would just smack. See, I go way back. So, all y'all know he know how to preach. All y'all know he know how to evangelize. But I need you to know that it didn't just start a couple of years ago. It was always in it. I would that you understand that General Elder Philip, and if y'all give me just two minutes and I'll be finished. He's, uh, I, I won't say he's like our chief, but I would say our chief, because I was supposed to introduce both, so our chief apostle elder, senior bishop of the house of God, Keith Dominion, wherever it is established, I believe that she and General Elder Philip would like the young people to know because it's been a good revival all weekend, amen? amen. So both of them, I believe, would say, don't let the day
ask that you bow your heads in prayer, if you will. Father, we come to you to stay. We come humble. We ask now that you would strip us of ourselves. And Lord, after we've been stripped, we pray that you would clothe us in the humble spirit of humility. Give us eyes that we may see. Give us ears that we may hear. Father, I pray that you give us hearts to receive. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you're doing. And my faith, we thank you for what you shall yet do. All glory and all honor belongs to you. And when it's all said and done, we'll say you did. We'll give you all glory. In Jesus' name. If you love the Lord, say amen. amen. I mean, really love the Lord, say amen. amen. I love the Lord who was first in my life. I do give honor the highest respect and esteem to my chief apostle elder, the Honorable Bishop Fletcher. I thank God for Dr. Timothy Mims, who is our assistant to the bishop. Y'all didn't even clap yet at all. Check. One, two. Mike check. I got that from you. Um, and I thank God for Steve Elder Mims, Trial Bishop Jameson, to all my, my brothers and sisters, and to especially my presiding elder. I didn't know to be a sliding elder that they'll hide after that introduction, an awesome job, and I thank God for her. And some of y'all say I'm hot, and I'm not going to try to be before you long. But this is what the Lord has said. It says according to the scriptures, according to the prophet Joel. 2.28 he says, and it shall come to pass. But afterward that I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And he prophesied that your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. We're living in that prophetic time where we're seeing the fulfillment of prophecy. That God is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. We came for one purpose, or we came for a convention. But ever since Nashville, I don't know how you feel, our churches have not been the same. And what God is saying, that he is sending a revival throughout the house of our church. The prophet Hosea prophetically said in Hosea 6 and 2, he says, after two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. The prophetic word that God is giving us today in this season, God is sending a revival for the people of God, God will revive and he will restore, he will renew and he will raise them up to another dimension and level in him. A level of new life, a renewed new strength in his presence. The theme that has been given for our convention has been there to soar according to Isaiah 40 and 31. The text says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew, renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not get weary, and they shall walk and not faint. In this season, God is reviving our young as well as old. To revive means to activate, to set in motion, to restore life to, to bring a consciousness 
and to make operational again. Y'all still here? And so we dare to soar. They said they that wait upon the Lord shall mount up with wings as an eagle. Yes, Lord. If you allow me to use the word soar, an acronym, S-O-A-R, what it means for those of us that are soaring to higher heights, it means that as we're spiritually all on a another R rim. Y'all missed it. When I'm soaring as an eagle, I'm at another dimension. So I am S soaring O on A another R rim. I'm in a, y'all gotta catch it. You, I said it one more time. Maybe two people missed it. Let me, let me say it again. Soar. Yes, if I would use it, it would mean that I'm spiritually. Everybody is not on the same spiritual level. Oh, I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get there. And and it all means I'm on I'm on another rim. A means I'm at another R rim. I'm at a I'm at a height uh, that I'm at another rim. So let, let's talk about let's talk about the eagle. Why would God liken us? As eagles found out some interesting facts about five points about the eagle and I'm gonna hurry up uh, number one I found out I found out I found out eagles have powerful vision and without vision without vision people perish uh, and so eagles have to have what we call powerful powerful vision uh, eagles are watch how attentive the bird is. Uh, uh, eagles have extreme powerful vision that their eyes are specifically designed for long distance focus with clarity. They can even spot another eagle soaring from 50 miles away. In other words, in other words, for me to be able to be on a spiritual level, I have to have vision. You got to know where you're going before you get there. And then you have to know how you're going to get there. Number one, you have to have vision. Number two, an eagle is fearless. Somebody said fearless. An eagle will never surrender to its prey. No matter the strength of the size, it always puts up a fight to win its prey or regain its territory. Eagles are fearless. No matter the size of the person or what weapon they may be holding against the enemy of the enemy of the eagle, he is fearless. In other words, if you're going to be soaring at another rim, you must not have the operating the spirit of fear. Amen. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, yeah. but He's given us power and love and a sound mind. Number two, He has to be fearless. Somebody say, I ain't scared of y'all. Eagles are fearless. That no matter what the size of the enemy, if it's a David, I'm not afraid of you, Goliath. If it's a storm, I'm not afraid of you, storm. Because no matter what the size of the enemy, he understands that he has victory because no weapon formed against him shall prosper. Not only does he have vision, not only is he fearless, then he's tenacious. In other words, he faces it and faces others without fear. Watch an eagle when a storm comes while other birds fly away from the storms. An eagle spreads his mighty wings and uses the current, uses the current to soar uh, to greater heights. The eagle takes advantage of the very storm that lesser birds fear. In other words, instead of running from the storm, uh, the eagle faces the storm. Some of us face storms. Instead of coming to the church, we go from the church. I'm going to work on this side over here. And so, in other words, when storms come, uh, they have the tenacity to say, I'm going to face 
this storm. I'm going to face this crisis. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not moving anywhere. But I'm going to face this storm. I'm not promised to Lord that if you're right now, they not stay right here. I'm not running anywhere. Storms we face. But they're tenacious and they challenges of life. Uh, we have to endure. There, there are storms that all of us must face. Uh, we must rise uh, to greater heights uh, like an eagle. There are storms of persecution, uh, storms financially, physical storms, health storms, storms of discouragement, storms of persecution. But nevertheless, no matter what the storm is, God has given us a tenacious spirit to weather the storm. Not only do they have vision, not only have they feelings, but they're tenacious, but they're high flyers. Somebody say fly high. Fly. Now eagles can fly to an altitude up to 10,000 feet, but they're also able to swiftly land on the ground. Uh, eagles don't fly and make a lot of noise. Y'all ain't hear me? They don't make a whole lot of noise, uh, but they're waiting for opportunities to strike their next prey or gliding with the current of the storm. Now, let me give you an interesting fact. In order to soar, you got to understand, it's one thing to fly to a height, but it's another thing to soar and maintain your height. I'm going to have to work in the middle now. Because what happens is, it's not that God doesn't revive us. It's not that God doesn't restore us. It's not that God doesn't renew us. It's just now that you're on this high, you got to stay where you are. Okay, okay, I'm going to work on this side. I got a little over there. In other words, soaring means I'm gliding where I am. I'm floating where I am. I'm not going down. I'm not going under. But I'm staying right here. When was the last time you felt renewed? And you don't have to be renewed every year. But stay where you are. Uh, we have revival after revival. You, honey, you just got restored last week. You just got saved Monday. It's one, y'all better hear me. It's one thing to get there, but it's another thing to maintain your height. Oh, y'all ain't saying that. We feel good now, but wait till Wednesday night. Where y'all at on church Sunday? Where y'all at on Sunday night? Where y'all at on Wednesday Bible study? Where y'all at on Friday night? It's good. I wish I had some swords in there and say, I ain't going down to another level. I'm going to stay on this high right here. And you know, heaven is okay. So you have flyers. Eagles get up to 10,000 feet. They're able to swiftly go to the ground. It doesn't, they don't mingle with pigeons. Pigeons, scavengers on the ground. Pigeons are those that grumble and complain all day long. Uh, but eagles don't talk. They just do more. Uh, they fly and make a less noise. In other words, they're looking for something to do. And, and so eagles don't hang with pigeons. Because pigeons always keep up mess. Mm. They're only known for mess. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You park your car on the tree and a, and a, and a pigeon will, will serenade it. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. You, you, you park your car on the, on the power line and a tree and a, and a, and a, and a pigeon will, 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 will Christian it. Y'all hear what I'm saying. And so they're no good for nothing but mess. A whole lot of folks in the church saying they're eagles, but they're full of pigeon. Mess, come into church with mess, leave with mess, start in something. Ah, uh, that ain't an eagle, that ain't an eagle. That's that's just a look at you. Don't take it too hard. That, that's a pigeon in the house. That's it, that's it. I found out, I found out this. Not only, not only are you eagle, I want you to understand, you're an eagle. Am I happy to an eagle? It's a unique bird. It's different. You're supposed to be different. You were called out to be different. And I found out that just because the eagle is a bird, 
every bird is not the same. I found out, I found out that even there are some birds that even fly higher than an eagle. I did a little research. I found out, I found, I found out, I discovered, I discovered that Rudell's griffin vulture can go up to 37,000 feet. I discovered that the bar headed goose can go to 28,000 feet. I found out the common crane can go under 29,000 feet. And so it's not how high you go, it's your attitude when you get up. Y'all missing over there. There's some people that are too high. There's, no, no, you miss it. There's some people that are too high. You can't talk to them, you can't teach them, you can't preach to them because you're too high. Somebody say, you gotta cut down. Some people too high, you can't approach them. If you miss their name, you're in trouble. My name is Dr. Reverend Elder Bishop Phillips. And don't you call me exhorter. And it's okay, but we all should be serving. Don't you be too high that if I miss your name, you, you're my enemy now. I wish I had some help in here. In other words, come down off your high horse. He that exhausts himself shall be a man for him. Humbles himself shall be exalted. Humble, come down of your high horse. And I found, I found out, I found out, I told y'all every bird ain't the same. Uh, I found out there were vultures. Vultures are big birds, but vultures are only good for dead stuff. Preach more, I'm gonna do the best I can, but, but I got uh, Vultures, uh, they fly high, but they always looking for roadkill. They are always looking for dead stuff. There's some folks in the church that's all they look for is dead stuff. What you did in your past, what you did behind the door, there's some vultures in the house and they're looking for dead stuff. But your past is behind you. Y'all sit down, sit down. Vultures. Always looking for dead stuff. I know what the problem is. I need you to help me salute it. I know what the issue is. I need some. I wish I had some help over there. I need somebody to help me tell me how to fix it. I don't need you digging up in my past. I don't need you digging up behind what I used to do. My past is behind me and my future's ahead. Vultures in the house. No, you, you're a vulture. Y'all see, y'all see, y'all see, y'all see. Y'all see. I mean, I'm hot off of this one. Didn't have some birds I found out. But until I found out. And some birds just, they only go so high. Find out there's some birds that fly low. The peacock yeah, is the pretty bird. Can I talk about them? Pretty feathers. Come to church shop. Come in late, me early. Look at me, I'm the fa- I ain't talking about none of y'all. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. The fashion show is like you walking down fashion aisle. Look at me, you're, you're just a peacock. That's not an eagle, that's a peacock. They're not good for nothing, they just look pretty. They sit on the pews, they just look pretty. They don't give, they just look pretty. They sweet, they look nice, but that's all they're good for. Just sitting still, doing nothing, and looking pretty. That's a peacock. It's not an eagle. Whole lot of folks just come to church, they just look good. Then there's some chickens. Uh, chickens they say stuff and then they run. Tell you don't have to help me out after this. 
whole lot of folk. I would say this, but you're a chicken. You should open your mouth, but you're a chicken. Boy, meat cup, you're a chicken. I'm uh, tired to talk up, you're a chicken. But you got a whole lot of put, 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 whole lot of talk. But when it's time to stand up, you're a chicken. Sit down, chickens. That's not an eagle. Time to speak up, you son. Then, two high birds are fine. They not going anywhere. Y'all help me. They not going anywhere and they don't want you to go anywhere. They stuck on ground zero and as much as they can, they gonna keep you in a barnyard on a chicken level. But somebody say, I'm an eagle. I, I can't hang with these chickens. Y'all call me strange. Y'all call me crazy. But I've been, I've been designed to soar. I'm sorry, I ain't out here plucking. I ain't scared of none of y'all. And so I ain't scared. I'm gonna do like God said. I'm gonna rise up and soar like an eagle. Somebody say, don't be a chicken. <laughs> y'all sit down, let me hurry up. I found out there are birds. You can't soar, you can't even fly. First of all, you got a problem getting up off the ground. Some of our churches are like nursing homes. It's dead. Y'all ain't got to say amen. It's dead. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You walk in there, come over here and get it right. Till I die. Yeah, that's what you're doing. You sit right there, dying in the house. Y'all sit right there, no strength, no anointing. You sitting there with your dry bones. You're sitting there and it's dead. That's why nobody want to come. If you're alive, if you're alive, you ought to have no Holy Ghost. Nobody want to go to a dead church. Gotta pump you up. church. I went in there and I said, Lord, what is this? Even some frogs are more alive than some of our churches. At least they jumping. <laughs> okay, y'all see the let me, let me go to the birds that, that told you about the high ones I told you about. Told you about the ones that are on a certain level. Just what they gonna be. Don't ask me, me for nothing, it won't be nothing. Don't ask me to contribute, it won't be nothing. Don't ask me to be responsible, this is far as I'm gonna go. You got some folks in the church that say, this is far as I'm gonna go. This is much as I'm gonna give, this is much as I'm gonna do, I might see you. And then they go so spiritual, if it's the Lord's will, make Sunday. It is the Lord's will for you to be in church. Musician, y'all I got quiet on me now. Now let me tell you about the birds that can't fly. The birds. They have wings, but they can't fly. The penguin. Tuck see them talking about y'all men. Sharp. But they're unable to fly. They always waddling. You notice the penguin don't walk straight. They got a, you know, there are a whole lot of folks, I'm talking to some of y'all, instead of walking straight, you walking. You walking, you walking not needed and bow naked. You're walking in one church and not another church. You're dipping over here and dipping over there. Instead of walking straight, they're, they're, they're birds, but they're not sorry. They're wattless. They're not walking circumspectly, not walking upright. And we need people who are going to walk upright, who are going to walk straight. And all they're known for is swimming and diving. They're not known for flying. All 18 species are known specifically for diving. There's always somebody that's even in the church who's always diving in other folks' business, who's always diving in other people's business matters, who's always diving and dipping and ducking and dodging and slipping and peeping and creeping and hiding and sliding in other folks, being busybody in other men's matters, dipping and stuff that don't know nothing. 
nothing about talking about things they don't know nothing about. There's some devils, them penguins, they're not eagles. Penguins. Then you have the steamer duck. Y'all didn't, didn't know the steamer ducks uh, can't mess with steamer ducks because even though they're flightless, uh, the males are too heavy that they can't even lift off the ground. And the Bible says, lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us. If you got a boo, you need to let go of your boo. If you got a sweetheart, you let go of your sweetheart. If you're not married and he ain't marrying you, you better tell him put a ring on your finger. And if he can't marry you, say you need to talk to Felicia and you need to get out of here. Some of us need to understand that steamer ducks, you have to understand that, that sometimes you can't soar because you got too much weight on you. You got too much things holding you down and you can't fly because you're weighted down. Even physical way I saw them, they say jump, and you know some of us healthy people did one of these. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. When I was about 50 pounds lighter, I'd be doing this all night. I'd be boy, I'd be doing this. But you put on a couple of pounds, you'd be like, all right, go right ahead. Yeah, y'all got it. All right, hallelujah. It's called some weight. We're too heavy for liftoff. We're burning down with things. Now watch this about the steamer ducks. The steamer ducks can't fly, but they're very aggressive. They're dogmatic. Uh, they've been known to engage in epic bloody battles with each other over territorial disputes. Even though they can't fly, they always fight. There are people right now who are steamer ducks in the church. They're fighting for positions. They're fighting for titles. I think I ought to be the bishop. I, I ain't scared of none of y'all over there. I think I ought to be the pastor. I think I, they're fighting for positions. And then when God put people in position, they fight those who God puts in position. I ain't hear nobody in the choir. In other words, they're fighters. They're fighters. They'll fight everything and everybody when it comes to the kingdom of God. But can I tell y'all something? When God appoints somebody in a position, you can't move them. The devil can't move them. And they're not going anywhere until God says so. People fight the pastor because they want to be a pastor. Finding the leader because they want to be a leader. Can I prophesy? Some of y'all will be gone before the leaders are gone. Because y'all waiting for folks to die. But can I tell you, I ain't scared of y'all. Y'all waiting for folks to die. But you might die before the leader. They gonna outlive when I prophesy. They gonna outlive a lot of y'all. God knows what he's doing and he puts in place. I, the Bible says in Psalm 75, says, he said, I'm God. I'm, the promotion don't come from the east or the west or the north to the south. I set up one and I put down another. I, God, do this. Quit brown nosing. Yes, sir. Bite your nose. Quit fighting. Y'all sit down. I'm going to hurry up. And then I found out there's a weaker bird. Weaker. W-E-K-A. Weaker birds are from New Zealand. They make loud noises. The males and the females sing as a duet. They are known for not only singing, but they're known for stealing. I ain't going to preach. After all this shouting, And all of this dancing, and all of this spinning around and touch your neighbor, there's still people who are still food, small objects.
their liking is something that they love because even after all of that shouting, they're still. There are some people that you can't trust with nothing. You can't trust them with the treasury because they done bought a new hat, they done bought a new suit. There are people who are still and they'll be shouting and speaking at a tongue. Y'all ain't saying nothing. At the same time, that's not an eagle, that's a wicker bird. A wicker bird, they sang good, they sang in the choir. Oh, heck of these, heck of these, heck of these, heck of these. They sang real good, they shot real good, but they'll steal from you in a minute. You got a, can I preach? You got a lot of thieves in the church. We got a lot of thieves in the church. Can I prove it? Can I prove it? And your title don't validate you. You can still have a title and still be a crook. Judas had a title. I wish I had some help over here. Judas had a title, but he was a... So your title don't make you. It's your character. That's a wicker bird from New Zealand. They shout, it's called a wicker bird. W-E-K-A, wicker from New Zealand. They shout, they make a lot of noise, they sing, they sound good, but they are still from you in a minute. I hope y'all don't get mad. There are people who are stealing even now. And they have no conscience until they get caught. And the thief feel good until he get caught. I'm going to hurry up. I got to finish. Then there's the ostrich. Ostrich is a bird. But he can't fly. He's a big bird. He's a big name. Do you know who I am? You know our name has a legacy in the church. The big bird, he intimidates. There are a lot of bully spirits in the churches. There are a lot of ostriches that flex their muscles and say, I'm bigger than this. You know who I am? I'm bigger than you. You, you are under me. And I heard the preacher brother say, no, I'm not beneath nobody. I'm not under nobody. Who made you Lord over God's inheritance? You're big, you're bold, but you're flightless. That's the word. You better talk about Give big money. Have a big name. The ostrich is the largest bird. Watch this. I got to hurry up. But they, can, but they can grow to nine feet tall and more than 300 pounds. They're big birds. But they're powerless. The ostrich is known that as a bird, for his defense, it's a kicker. And what he does, he kicks in his defense. Y'all ain't going to like me after this. There are a lot of ostriches in the church. They kick everything. They kick leadership. They kick programs. They kick progress. They kick changes. Because they're big birds who ain't going anywhere. They're just fighters and kickers. I got to move, y'all. Is there anybody here that said, I don't want to be an ostrich. I don't want to kick what God is establishing. And then I discovered that the ostrich is one of the fastest runners. In other words, he can run up to 45 miles an hour. Some of us will be and will bold until trouble comes. And when trouble comes, then we'll run as fast as a trouble. Well, can I get a witness here? God needs somebody who will be in the eagle and say, I'm above that. I'm on a spiritual, on another realm that's higher than this. And so it is. God said, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I know you're weak. I know you're tired. But hold on and wait on the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. There's a promise here. They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. 
with wings of an eagle. Look at your brother and look at your sister and say, neighbor, I'm getting up from where I am. I'm an eagle. They should mount up with wings of an eagle. They should run and not get weary. They should walk and not faint. See ya.
got a nest to go rest. Wow, what a powerful word. What an anointed word. What a on-time word from General Elder Tommy Phillips. Let's give God a praise for that word on today. Beautiful word. After what we have heard this weekend and the climax on tonight, on today, if you ever thought about flying, you ought to be ready to fly high now. And if you were ever sick and tired of picking up crumbs off the ground, picking worms off the ground, hanging out with the chickens and the pigeons, and it's time. God has, God has already made it clear this weekend that it's time for you to take flight, and he's daring you to soar like he created you to be. Hey Amen. I, I, I can't say anything else. I'm just blown away with that beautiful message on today. God bless you. God bless you, the hearers of his word. And uh, we're going to relinquish it back into the hands of our capable superintendent. Hey Amen. Who's doing a beautiful job. Let's give her a hand. The deaconess, Charmaine's role. Let us thank God for her at this time. Hallelujah. That was a word. I don't know about you, but I was trying to trying to locate those different birds in my life and eliminate those. Amen. Amen. So I thank God for General Elder Tommy Phillips. I just I don't want to be before you guys too long. I I've, I've I've done this before and I, I didn't quite understand why 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 Bishop would do it again and it, it just became so clear to me that we never really understand why God puts us in position. But we have to, we have to follow his plans and just do what he says. We have to stop questioning God. And I'm very inquisitive, so I'm always like, Lord, why? Lord, you know I don't want to, but we have to really just step in there and uh, just do what God says. Stop complaining about it. You know? Oh, I've done it before. I don't want to do it no more. No. Because you never know what God has. And I just want to say, Bishop Fletcher, this is truly an honor to serve this position again. And just to be here and experience this, hallelujah, I just thank God. And I thank God for each and every one of you. I don't want to be too long. The ushers, the cooks, Fort Pierce, just everybody. I just thank God for you. And I appreciate and I love each and every one of you for your encouraging words, the, the pats on the back, the phone calls, the text message. I appreciate it. And I love each and every one of you. And continue to pray for me. I just want to go higher and I want to stay there. Amen? Amen.